Hello and welcome back. Today we will start Unit 4 on Digital Control Systems Analysis and Design. It will be an examination of digital systems as well as designing controllers for them to meet certain specifications. You will see there's a lot of overlap and similarity in what we've studied up to this point in the course, but looking at it from a different perspective. Lecture 7-1, Discrete Time Systems Convolution Sum. The objectives for Lecture 7.1 are that students should be able to define a discrete time and digital control system, and students should be able to determine the convolution, convolution sum of a discrete time system. A discrete time system receives data only at specific intervals, similar to how a digital computer works. A digital control system uses digital signals and a digital computer to control a process. Table 1 shows three special functions in discrete time that we will use in this course. The first one is a unit impulse or a impulse function in continuous time. Delta of t equals to the integral from negative mu to mu delta of lambda d lambda equals 1 at t equals 0. And 0 of t is not equal to 0. So for continuous time, the area under the curve is a 1 once you integrate over the impulse and it's 0 otherwise. Or you could have a shifted impulse where the integral from negative mu to mu of delta of lambda minus t naught d lambda equals one, when t minus t naught equals zero, and it's zero otherwise. In discrete time, this is actually delta of n, which is simply a unit impulse because it's equal to one when n equals zero, or delta of n minus k is equal to one when n minus k equals zero. So if we draw a quick sketch in the continuous time, we have t, and we indicate this as an arrow at zero, which shows that it's undefined at zero, but the integral over it has an area of one. Or for the shifted impulse, we have t. And here we show the arrow at t naught. In discrete time, it actually is defined. So if this is n at zero, it's really a lollipop with an amplitude of one, or here is a shifted one at k with an amplitude of one. The unit step is u of t is equal to one for t greater than zero or zero for t less than zero. And u of t minus t naught is a shifted unit impulse, unit step, apologize, one where t minus t naught is greater than or equal to zero, or zero for t minus t naught less than zero. In discrete time, it's u of n equal to 1 for n greater than or equal to 0. These are discrete steps, 0 otherwise. Or u of n minus k is 1 for n minus k greater than or equal to 0, and 0 for n minus k less than 0. So here's a sketch in this continuous time, and this is a review of what we've studied before. So here's our unit step that turns on at time 0 with a value of 1. And here's our shifted unit step that turns on at time t naught with an amplitude of 1. Here's our unit step in discrete time where we have zeros. Then at time 0, it jumps up to 1. And here's our unit step with zeros, and at time k, it jumps up to one. The unit ramp is r of t equals t u of t, where that is a value with a slope of one for t greater than zero and zero otherwise, or r of t minus t naught equals t minus t naught u of t minus t naught. In discrete time, this is r of n equals n u of n, or r of n minus k equals n minus k, u of n minus k. So first let's make the continuous time sketches. So here we have the horizontal axis t, the vertical axis at zero, and we have a zero up until time zero, and then it starts to rise with a slope of one, or here's our shifted ramp, which is zero up to t naught, and then it also starts to rise with a slope of one. In discrete time, here's our horizontal axis n, and we have zeros up until n equals zero, 
and then the lollipops start to rise also with a slope of one where this is one two three four so right here that amplitude would be a four this amplitude would be three two and one or once again we have n and now we have zeros up to k and then at k plus one i would have one k plus two i'd have two k plus three i'd have three and so on the unit impulse h of n of a linear time invariant system is the response of a system at rest which means no initial energy no initial conditions to a unit impulse at time zero see the system block diagram in figure one so our general solution is if the inputs x of n we model the system as h of n and the output is y of n. But what this means is that if my input was delta of n and it goes through my system, then the output would be h of n. So we know that like in continuous time, h of n is the unit impulse response and it holds the characteristics of our system. So we can use the convolution to find the output y of n of a linear time invariant system with an input x of n and a unit impulse h of n if both the system and input are causal, the convolution sum is y of n equals x of n convolved with h of n. The summation from k equals 0 to n, x of k, h of n minus k, or h of n convolved with x of n equal to the summation k equals 0 to n, x of n minus k, h of k. One useful math fact that we need to recall if we're going to do convolution sums is that the solution to the summation if the absolute value of a or the magnitude of a of less than one is the summation from k equals zero to n of a to the k is one minus a to the n plus one over one minus a or if n approaches infinity the summation k equals zero to infinity of a to the k is one over one minus a